Have you been experiencing slow sales and you're getting a little bit worried? Well, no need to panic. It is August. It is a slower time of the year for many online sellers. Uh, it's something that we call the summer slump, and it happens every year around this time. Make sure to check out my other videos to see uh, other things that I go over regarding this and, and uh, kind of time frames and things like that. Um, but in this particular video, I want to go over some strategies for dealing with the summer slump. How can you, uh, you know, make the best of this situation? Is there anything that you can do to potentially get more sales during this time and also what not to do. So make sure you stay to the end to see all of my different suggestions and you know take a look at that. So what can you do? First of all, one thing you can do is just wait it out. Don't panic. Don't try to do a bunch of different things to, to fix it. Uh, instead, just wait it out. And uh, if you're seeing that your competitors are also having slower sales, then there's likely not a ton that you can do uh, to suddenly boost your sales, you know? So sometimes it's just is what it is and you just gotta wait and kinda, you know, give it a little bit of time. Um, so one thing you can do is you can go to E-Rank and you can track some of your competitors. And if you do that and watch and see how their sales are doing, if they're doing similar to what you're doing, then you know that there's nothing wrong with your shop, there's nothing wrong with your listings necessarily, it's just is what it is. It's and, and there's a whole nother video where I go into why it might be slower during this time of year, because there are some, you know, reasons and there are some things to consider there. Um, but what, what else can you do? Uh, you can, of course, revamp your photos. Uh, that's always good. If you uh, have some photos that are not up to par, definitely work on that. Uh, you can also work on your SEO, and that in includes even your descriptions and things like that. Um, you know, you can take a look at that. You want to be doing that on some of your uh, worst selling items, uh, newer items that haven't been seen by a lot of eyes yet. Things like that uh, are really good to, to work on. Uh, you could run a sale, make sure your prices aren't so low that it's impossible for you to make a profit if you run a sale, of course. Uh, that's pretty important. And uh, you can also send out an email or two. That email could be about the sale, or that can be about new products that you listed, or it could be you know, just a, a fun email. You could do a giveaway or something like that too with an email. Uh, same thing with social media, kind of the same thing. You can advertise that you're running a sale on social media. You could advertise new products that you've just listed on social media, or something fun like a giveaway or anything to you know create excitement and get more people, more eyes on your shop, more people, you know, kind of coming your direction. And you can also advertise. Now, I don't recommend advertising uh, if uh, it's on items that haven't sold in the past and it's very much of a um, of an investment. You want to be careful about spending a bunch of money during a slow season on products that may or may not, you know, be the best products to start with. You just want to be careful with that kind of thing. But, you know, putting a few dollars towards advertising just to kind of experiment, that's, you know, kind of more of what I mean by that. Um, what not to do is probably more important. Don't do any major price drops. <laughs> it's something that people do commonly when things aren't looking great for their shop. They're just like, oh, my stuff is too expensive. I need to drop the price. Um, you really need to compare your shop with some competitors that sell very similar things within your niche um, and, and try to find those. And then you want to make sure you're priced a little bit higher than the average. Uh, you don't want to be the most expensive shop out there necessarily that sells your, your particular type of item, but you definitely don't want to be the least expensive either. And you need to make sure that you're making a profit and that you're paying yourself for your time. If you're making something that takes a lot of time, you know, then you should be paid accordingly for that. And you just, there's no point in having a business if you're just not going to make profits. Um, you're just doing it for fun you know you can do it a little bit less expensive but you, you got to be careful about that because before you know it you've you've put yourself into that cheap stuff kind of bracket or whatever and then you know people are going to expect that and you can't just drop your prices and then raise your prices and drop your prices you know you really can't do that there's actually some laws and things that you know make it to where you're really not supposed to do stuff like that and you're not supposed to raise your prices in order to just have a sale uh, there's some things that 
that are in place that are can get you in trouble if you do things like that. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, if you're going to do a sale, you know, do a sale. Um, don't do a really long term sale and don't do a huge, you know, discount kind of sale. Um, you know, but you got to be reasonable and really think it through and don't make a quick decision on that and regret it later. I have done that. I have actually um, sold products for way less than what I should. And after all the time and energy I put into it, I'm just like, I didn't make anything, you know? And I'm, what was I thinking? It's just not worth it. Um, make changes to listings that have sold well in the past. And once again, we're on the what not to do thing. So do not make changes to listings that have s sold well in the past. And selling well is kind of a general term that doesn't really explain very well. But if you have um, made 100 sales and 20 of those sales was on one particular listing, that's a really good listing for you probably. Um, so, you know, it just depends on how many sales you've made total. Um, just don't don't hurt your best sellers, literally the things that have sold the best for If you've only made 10 sales and seven of them were this one particular thing, yeah, it's only seven sales, but clearly something's working that brought those seven people there and made those seven people buy it. And so you want to be really careful about making changes to something like that. Um, minor changes are one thing, you know, it's, it's all kind of on a level of like how much are you willing to, to change, um, which kind of brings us into the next one. Don't make changes, major changes on multiple listings. You don't want to go through and just change everything. Um, it's not going to help you determine what worked and what didn't work. You want to be more like a scientist and go through slowly and make some changes and then wait and see how it goes. And you need to give it a chance. You need to give it weeks um, before you go through and try to make any other changes and and you know experiment with it a little bit but it's if it's slow for you then this is a good time to do that so you know think about that uh, so uh, oh and I forgot to introduce myself uh, Randy we crafty creations and uh, I am making a series of videos specifically about the summer slowdown uh, but I also have tons of other videos out there about go imagine and Etsy I've been selling on both platforms for a long time um, and have been had a lot of success on those platforms so I'm just sharing some of my knowledge and some information uh, I have a lot of followers that are from Go Imagine and a few that are from Etsy, and that's fine. Um, they're very similar, although they're very different, as anybody who sells on Go Imagine knows. So I'm, you know, this one's kind of general. This covers either. This covers uh, Michael's Maker Place or Amazon Handmade or anywhere else that you're selling online. Basically, um, you know, this is kind of it all applies, and it all, you know, is something that you can you can track. Uh, you know, all this information through. So don't panic. That's the most important part of this video, in my opinion. Don't panic. Just take a deep breath and um, realize that it's normal for summer to be a little bit slower and uh, just prepare for, you know, the busier season that's coming and look forward to that and know that that's happening. Uh, it can be a roller coaster. It really can. Uh, selling online. If you haven't been selling online for very long, you might not have seen as many of the dips, you know, and everything, but it, it's constantly flowing. We're always just kind of in a loop-de-loop, -loop, not really knowing what's going to happen. Uh, COVID and everybody not being able to go out and shop in stores was a huge high on the roller coaster for many people, and a lot of people kind of measure things by that, and unfortunately, that was a bit of a fluke. That's not... Uh, normal shopping that we get online unfortunately um, but it is what it is right we got to just keep on going and who knows what the future will bring and uh, one last thing is we need to get ready for quarter four quarter four is the last three months of the year so October November December that is when most people do more online shopping than any other time of the year. People are looking for gifts, people are looking for decor for their homes for the different holidays, and people are indoors more, and so they're spending more time on their computer and their phones and everything doing online shopping. So that is when we see the most sales. So in order to be ready for quarter four, we need to have our photos on par, our descriptions fully filled out, our shops just as detailed as we can. You know, if you're on Go Imagine, you need to have your Meet the Maker, you need to have how it's made, you need to fill out those individual sections. And um, 
that's going to make a huge difference when those shoppers do come and look at your products to feel that trust that they need to feel um, buying from you that they're actually going to get the item and then it's going to be what they expected and all of that of course and also for them to uh, you know be excited that they're getting a handmade item and then they know that it's not uh, you know, just some mass produced item that you're reselling or that type of thing. So just be ready for all of that. It is coming. We're already towards the end of summer, so it's not that far off. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for watching. If you found any value in this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see more videos about this. Um, I do think I have one more video that I want to kind of cover some topics on the summer slump and uh, that will complete the series there's already a couple out there so make sure to check them out as well and hope to see you back soon